welcome in the name of Schlotauer and Wauer um, to our click along. OK, um, so what is the idea of today's um, click along? Um, we will we will go through um, through a small or a simple example here with you. I will show you the basic and some of the advanced functionalities of Lisa. Um, if you um, choose chose to download the demo version, you're invited to, to follow me. I will give you an update every once in a while because in your in your uh, yeah you have as uh, Julia already explained, you have certain stages of this example in your software. So if at any point you said you're trying to follow and you couldn't follow, there's always the the chance to pick up um, at a later point um, and uh, and take one of the examples that that are included in the demo version. So don't panic if you're getting lost. You will always have a chance to um, to uh, pick up again uh, at a later point. Anyways, this is not really a training so um yeah you have the chance to play along and 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 try out the, some of the features by yourself but you don't definitely don't have to follow everything that i'm doing here it's more of a um, more of a nice to have that you have your own version at home so um a lot of introduction let's get to the core of business you should all see now my uh, my screen i'm also using the demo version that we provided it's um a demo of Lisa 7.2. We just rolled out this uh, this version. Um, for those of you who've never seen uh, Lisa, um, maybe a few introductory words. Lisa is um, first of all um, a traffic engineer um, a software package that is designed to help you develop um, signal timing plans. Uh, first and foremost, that means um, provide all the information uh, or develop all the information, configure all the information needed to set up um, a signal, uh, a, a signalized traffic light or a signalized intersection. Um, it is was first developed in uh, for the for the German market, so it's a bit centered around the whole world of OCIT, but it's not limited to that. We will see that later. Um, uh, it can, uh, yeah, automatically uh, calculate signal timing plans and can do the calculations for the um, for the intergreen times, and it can help you develop um, traffic actuated controls and get them to a state where you just have to upload them to a um, to a compatible uh, controller. So basically, three pillars: um, creation of signal timing plans evaluation of signal timing plans and then testing of traffic actuated controls and also development of that and um, we have several modules here in lisa which help us do it what we will do is we will start with a site plan of an intersection put in all the basic geometric data um, to the calculations that we need for the safety then we do the calculations that we need for the capacity, and then we will take a look on what would be the next steps of developing a traffic actuated control. Is something that uh, it's hard to fit in all that in two hours, but we will. Well, I will try to give you an idea how things are handled in Lisa. So, first look at the panels we have here at the ribbons. So we have this ribbon structure configuration. This is everything that has to do with setting up the intersection, putting in all the data that relate to signal groups, that relate to um, detectors, um, the geometry of the lanes and stuff. We will see how that is done. Then we have the second ribbon about planning. So here we do the safety calculations, intergreen times. We uh, define stages, we calculate signal timing plans, and we can also define and test traffic actuated controls. Then we have this ribbon about in unsignalized um, intersections, more uh, interesting for the German market, I'd say, um, for evaluating uh, intersections that don't have an intersection. So maybe you want to do a comparison. Can I maybe cope without an intersection or would, um, would a roundabout do? Um, so it's also possible here. We'll probably uh, not touch that today. And then, um, yeah in the end support um first of all and the 
blue ribbon that we haven't touched yet here. The first one, the blue Lisa ribbon. This brings us to the project management view. This is the view where we all where we start um, when we are starting a new project. Um, when you open this, you should see here um, these intersections, uh, including um, yeah, the example intersections. They are organized by intersections and coordinations. So we also have the chance to look at coordinated um, uh, coordinated intersections and evaluate them. Then you have here the uh, intersections which are ordered by city first and then the name of the intersection and the and the um, variant of the variant of the the intersection so we are going to work with this intersection that we called example and um, this is what i mentioned we have here several versions of this intersection and um, when you look at what we see here we have here this tree view where the intersections are um, kind of uh, uh, ordered uh, by, by the variance. Then you have your general information and configuration uh, data um, about the intersection. You have this um, schematic view of the intersection that is um, calculated based on the data. And then down here you have this public comment section. And if you want to follow, you can see here that every intersection variant in the comments you can see what it includes so x, variant x1 number one has the basic data o2 has the signal groups o3 has everything before plus conflicts intergreen times and so on and so on we will start with example o1 because uh, what we're not have here is an empty intersection we will um, i will show you how you order how you enter this data which is already in here we will probably have to erase it first. Um, anyways, um, just to give you an idea, what are the um, the preferences that you can change in here in this window? Um, you have this general information about the location, intersection name, maybe project name, stuff that is interesting when you are developing intersections for a client or if you are a municipality you want to put in here the information about um, yeah how you are holding administering your data identification uh, information of the actual field device that is out there on the street then um, maybe important here is the field guideline where you can see we're now working with something we call RILSA 2015. So RILSA, that's the German uh, handbook or roadside manual that uh, that deals with traffic lights and um, and the, um, the definitions of capacities and so on. We You can see here you can choose from guidelines from various countries like the Netherlands, Switzerland, Austria, Poland, Czech Republic and so on. Uh, we quite recently uh, or in, are in the process of including Israel here. Um, so um, this list is getting longer and longer, de always depending on yeah, our market access or if there are opportunities for us to um, to get into a new market we are doing. We, will, we are also uh, willing to include new guidelines and, and um, outside manuals in here that we use for the evaluation of the signal timing plans. So far so good, let's get into business and not waste so much time with the boring part of the of the software let's get into entering data um where these are any shines taking um you can see as i mentioned there is already data here um, because um, we didn't include an empty example in the demo here so i will delete the data that is already in here and show you the process of how would you get started so um, usually this background would be empty and we would just open uh, or import a site plan. Um, I have here uh, locally on my machine um, not only this this picture, this PDF of this intersection that we're going to use for the example just to show you what also is possible. We can also import these DXF files here. Um, so the open source format of 
of, um, of Autodesk um, kind of related uh, geodata where you can uh, work with layers, include them, exclude them. Um, so if I would use this backdrop, I'm asked what is the scale. I will not enter it now, but just to show you that this is also an option of uh, including this kind of data. But let's get back to our actual example. So this is a PDF. And now I'm asked if I want to enter a scale. So this step is where Lisa is taking the information or is, um, is trying to figure out um, how many pixels are actually uh, do you actually um, uh, correspond with a meter? And all you have to do is click and hold and pull this here along the scale that somebody was so kind to include in this picture. And then you tell Lisa, yeah, you estimate correct. This is about 20 meters. So Lisa at this point is making some kind of estimation of the the this the size of the picture that you have uploaded so when you are having a reasonable scale of the picture you're using then you should already get a good estimation here but of course the idea is here to put an exact number 20 meters and from now on everything that i put in here has um, the correct scale and all the all the distances that are used for all our calculations like intergreen times and so on are um, correct so, how do we get on here now? Um, so far, all I have is a picture. Um, to get started, what I first have to do is to define the legs um, using this button here. So I, um, I'm just pulling this leg axis from the inside to the outside. You might see that there is now this uh, this blue uh, bluish arrow and my uh, and the uh, cursor has changed into the lane um, lane entering tool. So and now I can just click these lanes here into the uh, into the site plan. Um, if necessary, I can move them along a little bit. The idea is that the line is exactly ending where the stop line is in my layout plan. So and this this point is of extreme interest for all the calculations for the intergreen time and so on. Also, Lisa has figured out that the lanes that I placed on the right side of this um, of this axis are actually approaches and the other one are exits of the intersection. Um, so whatever lane I would end, I would add uh, on this side uh, is, an, is an entrance and the others are approaches. I can change that uh, if I have um, in certain geometries where maybe there is a tram line on the side, um, so I'm not limited to. But the standard uh, standard is that Lisa assumes that this is the um, that everything to the right is entering and so on. So I just go leg by leg with this process of entering the lanes, move them along a little bit so they fit better. Oh, we don't have to be precise here. It's just for the sake of showing the functionality. So, ah, that's something he says, I cannot leave it like that. I have to move it. <laughs> okay. Once this is done, now we have all the entrances and approaches. When we save it, we can have a look. And there's this small button up here, which is always bringing up the intersection diagram. And this intersection diagram is just internally uh, calculated by Lisa based on the, the geometric data that I've entered. So, so, so far, everything that Lisa knows about the intersection is that we have four, uh, four approaches and they have the, with their uh, respective number of lanes. So, and the more information we enter here, the more information will also uh, pop up here in this intersection diagram. So let's let's go on. The next step is to actually connect uh, our approaches with one another. Um, 
by that I just use this uh, connection tool and I should not have clicked that way. Sometimes my mouse is doing uh, weird stuff because I'm I'm doing this in my home office with an USB hub and sometimes it's not registering certain clicks. So please uh, excuse if sometimes there's some confusion in what I'm doing. So how do I have I done this? I'm just clicking somewhere here in a travel path or in, in one of the lanes that I've defined and uh, then just click on its destination and then this travel path is automatically uh, uh, drawn by Lisa. I can also make some adjustments by clicking this box in the middle, changing its um, changing its radius, um, and depending on what connections I actually want to be included later in my calculations, I can also make uh, yeah, additional connections. So yeah, that's just what I was talking about. And really register well. Maybe I should connect my mouse in a different way. But that would mean that our connection would break down because there's also my headset in there. So, well, we'll have to live with the one or a few hiccups on the way. So, this I will do for all the lanes and all the connections. Just a reminder, why are we doing this? Why are we making, uh, going through all this process of um, of entering this whole geometry? It is, of course, because what we want Lisa to do later is automatically calculate all the conflicts that we have in this intersection. And you can already see them. If maybe you noticed here this little orange ball that is um, uh, that is drawn here, we want Lisa to automatically uh, detect all the conflicts in our intersection and later automatically uh, calculate the um, the intergreen times. So, as I said, safety, capacity, and, and traffic actuated, or I don't know which words I used, so, but yeah, we go along these three pillars, safety, capacity, um, and traffic actuation. So we're still working on the on the safety side. But basically also on the capacity side, if you see when I click on some of the here on the lanes, you see we have on the left side this property window where you um, see certain uh, properties of the of the lane that we've been drawing. So we have here the maximum uh, speed of 50 kilometers. We have we can enter a transport mode, which we haven't done so far because we have not put a signal group to it. Um, And also with the connections, you can see here that the connection travel path, we have uh, given it a width of two meters. This is usually what we use as a standard width for the for the uh, for the vehicles um, when we have certain conflicts, like as you can see here. Here, this conflict here that is found, it's um, because of this very sharp angle. Um, the conflict is actually uh, where the where the travel paths are touching each other, while here where we have a 90 degree angle, the the uh, the conflict point that will be used for the calculation is actually the middle of the travel path. But these the the way that Lisa chooses conflicts is can be dependent on the country that we're in. So there are certain um, there are certain guidelines that uh, affect which which. Um, um, which conflict is used and you as a user can basically make your own choices if you say okay i'm not i'm not convinced um, or i'm not happy with the with the conflict uh, that that lisa chose here i want to take another one but we will not go through this because otherwise we we won't finish today i guess so one more approach missing here And this left turner. And I just want to make sure that the left turner is somewhere on the, yeah, maybe here. 
make sure they don't touch each, each other. That would make for very weird conflicts in the end. So that is basically that. Um, so I have all the through traffic. I have all the right turners, left turners, and so on. And if I want to check if I uh, have all my connections covered, I can bring up again my intersection diagram. And as you can see now, uh, Lisa has included here these arrows. That is the representation of the data that they just entered. So I can see I have this um, through and right turning lanes and I have the left turning lanes. So everything seems to be set up correctly. That's it for the vehicles at this point. Let's talk about um, pedestrians and bicycles. How do we include those? Um, we do it by simply drawing a crossing. And let me zoom in here a bit because it tends to get a bit messy with all these conflicts that Lisa is already finding. So you can see what I've done. I've basically just drawn this line. What Lisa automatically does, it's um, it's drawing a rectangular crossing. And now I can go in here and put the crossing. I uh, put the um, these uh, these points of the crossing in a position so it so it uh, covers the whole crossing uh, correctly and um, and is also calculating the right crossing distances. That's what we're going to do for all these crossings here. Make sure we go from one side of the road to the other. Make sure we get these points in the corner right and one more crossing to go and here we are another option so this is this is pedestrians and bicycle um, another option would be that um, we want the bicycles on the street in that case, we could go here and, and say, OK, um, we take the um, we take the lane where we know that the bicycle is traveling with the vehicles and we have the property side here and can say, OK, put the bicycle with on it. And you can see now, um, I hope you can see it in the stream that uh, the outlines of this uh, this lane are now uh, or at this of this uh, connection are now in red, so indicating that there are bicycles on it. I could also say, OK, here maybe I have a bus with it on and. Uh, it's the, mm, there it is, so it turns blue. Or maybe there's a tram. Which is basically, I think it's also blue, right? Yeah, because they're both public transport. But let's take them out again. So, the handling of bicycles, it's uh, there are, I think, as many ways of including them as there are cities, at least in Germany, that's the case. So, um, when we want to make, when we have no idea of how to do it, and we just say, okay, actually, bicycles are allowed on all. Um, on all movements here, we can add the transport mode bicycle mode bicycle to the whole intersection, and now they will be included in the in our uh, calculations for all of these uh, for all of the 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 lanes and and connections. So far, so good. Let's take a look again of our intersection diagram, as you can see here now. Um, the intersection is now uh, now has these crossings here. They're also put in there automatically. Um, what we are still missing and what is maybe one of the what is the very important part is to define the signal groups here. Um, as you you have seen, we started with an with an example where the signal groups are basically already uh, defined. Um, so when we click here on the lane where we can uh, for every lane we can define what signal groups shall be uh, used for for this lane and they're already here um, in this list if they would not be there or if i'm not satisfied with this with the signal groups who appear in the list i could just 
add one by uh, clicking on the screen cross and then this little dialog pops up um, where I can just put a new one and just, I don't know, put one in for the sake of the example. I don't know, example. <coughs> and by the type of the, of the lane, it's already suggesting a signal group type. You have the option in Lisa to define different signal types, I don't know, for vehicles, vehicles with green and yellow, vehicle just red and yellow, pedestrian, um, pedestrian signals, bicycle signals, combined bicycle and pedestrians, public transport. So what you see here, these are the standard signal group types. If you are, um, for some reason, have to use your own psych, uh, signals, maybe there's some signal that only in, exists only in your city or only in your country or that a certain customer is, um, is asking for you to integrate, then you can do that. There is a, maybe we, I will show you later how to do it. Um, so we're not limited to it. Everything that, everything that can be connected to a controller, we can somehow also uh, integrate into the software, I would say. Um, so example, what would happen if I add it here, then it would show up in the list. You can see it down here and it is um, now selected for this um, for this lane, but I don't want to use this one. So get, let's get rid of it again. I want to use vehicular signal group one. I want to use here also signal group one. Here you will have turners. So usually we would go through defining all of those, but now they're already there. So I'm just reading out what's on the side plan and put them here. Thing about, oh, is it not letting me? Yeah, here you see um, my mouse registering weird again. Um, thing about Germany, here we can have a permissive uh, left turner. I don't know. There are um, most countries would not allow that, so we could just let them go with the same signal. And also, the on the opposing traffic can go through at the same time with this permissive thing going on between the left turners. Here, on the other hand, we want to have a dedicated left turning signal to make things more safe. <coughs> Pedestrians, as you can see here, we have these signals P2, P2, P3, P4. So this is the approach number four, though so that's gonna be P4. We have also an acoustic signal A4 that is going in parallel, and we have um, a flashing yellow light. That's, a, I think, a specialty in Germany. So when we have, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, to give um, to give the vehicles some sign of that they have to be cautious while while turning. So we're going to put in this flashing light as long as the uh, pedestrians are passing. Same here. So P3. What did I put here? P2, P4. Yeah, no P2, P4. And this is P3, A3 for dash three. And this is. P2, A2, flash 2. So having made these definitions, going once again in our intersection diagram, which is now, oh, I moved. I moved this crossing here, which is now much more comprehensive. So we see the basic, um, structure of the intersection now we have the the uh, we have the signals um on the lanes as you can see there i can make it a bit bigger if my mouse lets me no it does not uh, we have the um the type of the type of, uh, of vehicles here, vehicles and bicycles. We have pedestrians here. Um, yeah, and the signal groups. So far, so good. Um, what we could do at this point as well, we could enter detectors. I think they are already in here. Yeah, 
we will come to that later when I just give you a quick overview about the traffic actuated functions, but I don't, um, I think we have to um, get on here with the uh, basic definitions just to get to a signal timing plan at some point. So geometry we have covered. How do we get from this geometry now to intergreen times? Um, there are a few extra definitions that you have to make to let Lisa know what are your um, what are your um, uh, your preferences. Um, first and foremost, in the signal group list itself. So all the signal groups that we have defined before are now here in this list. Um, the vehicular ones, the pedestrians, the acoustic signal, and the flashing. So here again, you can see the type. Um, we could change it here uh, one more time. Also, um, ah, so I see. And um, then we see the, the geometry, we see a symbol for the direction and some definitions. Minimum green time, for example, we've put in here six seconds for all the all the um, uh, all the signal groups. Usually in Germany, we would go with 10 seconds for the main direction. Um, but as this is an international click along, I would just leave this on six seconds. <laughs> and um, you can change here the initiation of the signal groups. How long should you add a yellow take? How long shall a uh, yellow take? So these are all information that we have given in the signal type. Um, and then we have to define what is the off state of the intersection, um, what which uh, direction has to give way. Um, so in this case, vehicular one and vehicular three would actually be green in the off state and also would be P2 and P4. Okay, uh, something that I can show you here also, by the way, um, if we go into the um, into our basic data here in the leg, if I click on the leg again, I can also give you the information that this is the main street and that they have the uh, right of way and if I do this also for the secondary directions tell them to yield I'm not having that there it is right of way yield this will also automatically show up here in the uh, intersection diagram so um, before we go into evaluation parameters, you might notice that I've skipped this button here. So we like historically um, the the way of using Lisa has always been we go from left to right. We start here with basic data, then we define signal groups, facilities, maybe detectors, public transport. This is all the like the signaling. This is all of the detection hardware, and then we go step by step through the conflicts, inter green time calculation. Um, and once we have done this, which is the safety part, we go to stages and so on and so on. So I want to go directly into this part and get the inter green time settled. And after that, we can look at the evaluation parameters, which I'm there for having a better uh, yeah, a, a database or a basis for for actually uh, calculating um, calculating a signal timing plan. Um, as soon as we have the safety covered, we can already automatically uh, calculate a signal timing plan, but it will not be um, based on the flows that we have at hand. Um, it will just be based on the on the safety measures, uh, having inter green times and having minimum green times inside. So. Yeah, let's let's maybe do that. And if we as, as soon as we've we've done this basic calculation, then we go back and 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 work with evaluation parameters and and make a fitting plan that is also having the capacity to deal with what we see in this intersection. So let's have a look again at our 
So what we have here is the conflict matrix. And um, these conflicts, you can get them directly from Lisa. Ask Lisa to give you all the conflicts and, um, and fill this matrix with them. Um, or you can go through them one by one and put them by yourself. The thing is, this conflict matrix, you have to touch it anyways. It's the one, it's one of the most important uh, um, safety relevant features of the uh, traffic controller. So um, although Lisa can fill it for you, it will not do it in a way that it will put too many conflicts in here so the intersection wouldn't work. You have to put them in here manually because this is the this is what you're signing off for in the end at the end of the day and why we are why uh, you're the traffic engineer and 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 why people pay you. So um, this is this is one part that has to be done manually just because there has to be a human being responsible for it. Um, we will skip this part though and go to um, because it's a bit boring for you to watch me making these crosses in this in this uh, in this matrix and I will just show you the outcome of that and we jump to the example number three which is basically all the same just it has conflicts already in it. So here you can see every cross means that these two signal groups cannot be um, in a green state at the same time. For example, vehicular one and vehicular two, um, no, vehicular one, yeah, vehicular one and vehicular two cannot, vehicular one and vehicular left turning can, and so on and so on. So this is maybe the main part of the, of the together with the intergreen times the main part of the safety relevant features of the controller so once we're done with that and we're happy um, with what we've done here we go into the intergreen time calculation and that should not happen hmm well, i hope i have an example where it's working That's unfortunate. Oh. Okay. Well, let me jump to my own Lisa version because I have the feeling that we compiled um, a DLL which does not belong to this demo version. And please excuse the confusion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, now I remember. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, um, I'm very sorry for that. To just explain what happened here, um, we made a new demo version with the new Lisa 7.2, and um, in the process, we have to, I don't know, um, use an example, somehow encrypt it so, uh, and compile it with a new version. And it seems in that process, um, the the library that is used for the um, for the calculation of the intergreen times is one of an older version that cannot work with with this uh, this newer version. So um, I'm I'm really sorry that um, that we cannot open this in the demo version, but I will just show it to you in the regular version of Lisa. So um, I hope, uh, and you will get the point. Um, and so, so this is the, this is the, um, uh, this is the module that I wanted to show you. So again, it's basically the same example that we were just working on. Um, I have showed you these these um, conflicts here um, in the matrix. And what we're doing now 
here is that we do the um, the calculation of the intergreen times for all the conflicts that Lisa has found. So let's remember uh, the basic data um, looked like this. And these conflicts that Lisa has found, um, they are a lot. So mm, also there are more than one conflict points between two given signal groups. And the job that Lisa has now is to evaluate all these conflicts and see which conflict is from a safety perspective uh, the one that is relevant that has the biggest intergreen time and that is the one that goes then into the that will use be used then in the intergreen time matrix so uh, and the module that we're in here is the module where we can see all the uh, relevant times for all the conflicts that lisa has found if we click on this button recalculate green times which are also a lot and we see also which one Lisa will and we can we can see here which conflict Lisa actually is using uh, and which is the relevant one and we can make adjustments um, if we are not happy with it. So um, every big line here is a conflict between two signal groups, for example, V1, V2, they are they are meeting each other at a 90 degree angle, so there is there are no so not so many different uh, conflicts to consider. Um, what difference there is comes basically from the different calculations that are made for vehicles and for bicycles. Um, so um, for bicycles, we don't have a vehicle length, which we have for for normal vehicles, and we can see here that. Uh, the time that is actually um, the the relevant one are these five seconds here, um, and it's marking here also or telling me that the that the decisive uh, conflict included a bicycle. So um, in some cases, it can be a political decision whether or not to to allow bicycles on the street or not. So when Lisa can can give you can help you here and say, okay, um, you know what we are losing capacity here because of the bicycles. Maybe you should think about putting them on an extra lane or, or have a dedicated bicycle pathway somewhere and not allow them here on the streets because um, without them, we could maybe win a second or some or, or not somewhere. Um, yeah. Also, um, yeah, what, what you can use this for is you have really all the distances here uh, um, that that uh, that are relevant documented you can double check it you can maybe maybe make some adjustments when you know uh, yeah I have maybe an approach where the where the vehicle length is not we are not only talking about uh, individual cars we are talking about a lot of uh, heavy traffic so you maybe want to use a different vehicle vehicle length maybe it's a factory outlet where um, or a factory uh, car park where there are only uh, trucks coming off so you want to go here with 12 meters and you see as soon as you do that um, you have a change here in the in the outcome of the calculation um, we also can do we can open the basic data model uh, module side by side uh, like this and when I'm clicking on a conflict here and sometimes it's hard to figure out in this huge table what is the what is the conflict that really matters uh, or what what where was this conflict on my uh, on my intersection when you click on it here I don't know if you noticed it's marked in the in the graphical representation of the intersection so you can see okay this is ah this is the conflict that we're talking about this is the decisive one good to know yeah and um, yeah once you're happy with all that and the outcome of all these calculations let me take this one out and recalculate because that was just assuming that we have trucks there um then you can go on and fill your intergreen time matrix, which you can 
check here. What was that the example that one was in? That's the one. Yeah, and this is um these are intergreen times based on the actual topology of the intersection uh with the exact measures the exact speeds i didn't even show you all the options that you have here for the um for the calculation um it's not only the distances it's not only the this uh it's also the speeds of the vehicles right so you have this option deal dialogue where you can um, first of all, define all kinds of speed parameters for pedestrians, for sight impaired, if you have acoustic signals for the bicycles themselves, shall they have a length or not? Um, then there are a lot of options of how to include yellow time into the intergreen time. So there are as many options here as there, I always like to say as many options as there are cities in the world, because every city has its small detail of uh, maybe including a second here or now ignoring a second there. And over the years we have included a lot of these uh, these options and a lot of there's a lot of room for tweaking in some uh, guidelines in some versions when you use the, the, the guideline for a certain uh, for a certain country, there will be less options because some countries don't allow them. They explicitly ask us to not ex include them. Um, well, yeah. Um, if there's something in here that is missing for your country, contact us. We will have a look at it and see if we have to include something here. Um, that said, as I said, there's no right and wrong. There are just different tastes from all over the world that uh, that are reflected in the options here. So what have we done so far? Let's remind ourselves again. We have entered the um we've entered the basic topology of the intersection we have defined the conflicts okay we cheated a bit because we didn't do the conflicts here live i mean it takes five minutes um but uh it's not fun to watch so we skipped that part um we have signal groups defined and we have intergreen times uh calculated that said the safety measurements are done at this point. Uh, we could go, we can go into the calculation of signal timing plans now, or at least in the creation of signal timing plans, because we have everything that we need from a safety perspective. And I go to the signal timing plans. Uh, uh, option here and what, what I can let Lisa do is calculate the signal timing when, I don't know, based on minimum green times, because that is all I have. I could also choose a flow if I would have entered it. We will do that as the next step. Uh, but if I say all I have is minimum green times and inter green times, I can just say, okay, let's have a desired cycle time of say 75 seconds and use this inter green time matrix and then just Show me what you're going to make of that. Now Lisa is combining different uh, stages that it's um, that it's calculating. And it has come up with this uh, signal timing plan that is minimizing the the intergreen times that are that are used within the plan the length of the stages is absolutely generic it is more or less uh, yeah more or less random um, that's why it's also such a weird combination that we're seeing here it's basically just minimizing the the intergreen times over the over this uh, this um, 75 second cycle um, we will see as soon as we enter a flow it will look much different to this, uh, maybe more logical. Also, it does not have any kind of, I don't know, offset uh, um, parameters here. So um, yeah, the, the main direction is not starting in the same second. So um, it's not very intelligent, but it's something. It has taken us exactly one hour to get here. 
And if we put in another 15 minutes of defining a uh, flow and maybe some offset, this will even look good and be useful. So as you can see, um, I know there has been a lot of detail and I've been going over a lot of functions without really explaining them or just uh, scratching on the surface. But if you are a dedicated and experienced user, um, there's nothing easier than just setting up um, a fixed timing plan within within a few minutes, basically. So let's forget this plan because I don't like it. It's not based on a flow. It's uh, not including uh, any offsets. And let's go into the evaluation parameter module. And see what we can do here. So what do we see? Uh, we see on the left a tree of flows where there's nothing there yet. Um, also, there is when when they, there is a matrix up here and there's a vehicle distribution down here to the right. So as soon as we create a new flow, we can give it a name. I don't know, test one. It's based on all because there is none. If I would already have entered a flow, I could, I don't know, uh, take that flow and just, I don't know, increase it by 20% and make that my new flow, stuff like that. So here's the new flow. Now I have this matrix where I can enter data and say, OK, from one to three, this is the main direction. We have maybe 800 vehicles. And as soon as I enter that, um, Lisa starts drawing and uh, makes these nice bar charts here that are even having the right angles of the intersection. Uh, I want to choose the right turner. I'm just entering no, it's the left turner. Sorry, just entering data random two to one is also right turning maybe 30 150 through i'm making these up numbers up as i'm as i go along 300 that is a bit strong left turner let's do it it's a bit less three to one it's the other direction let's say 900 three to two this is right turning vehicles 80 and maybe a bit stronger right left turner here 125 and then we have this last four to one let's make this very very light 50. and yeah that's the right turn a few, let's say 80. So, and there's my flow and it's even neatly done. So um, it's a nice way also of documenting uh, uh, any countings that you've made in the streets and uh, it's making a very neat graphical representation. I can uh, play around with it to make it easier readable. Also, down here, if I have data about car distributions, vehicle distributions, I can say, okay, if it, of these 80 vehicles, I have, say, 78 cars, two motorbikes, trucks are like six, I don't know. And you can see that down here, uh, that Lisa is automatically giving me the percentage of heavy vehicle traffic. And uh, most importantly, it's using this data for the evaluation uh, of the signal timing plan of the waiting time of the level of, of service and so on. We will see that in a minute, what it's doing with this data. So I have the, the better data I have, uh, the more data I have, the better I can enter it here, but I don't necessarily have to if this data is not available. Um, then I can also just go ahead and say, you know what, I just know it's 80 cars and I have a percentage of 12 percent and that's how I want to do it. Um, it's my estimation and then all the data I've put in here is gray so it's using the percentage. If I change the data up here again then it knows ah, okay so you do have the data so it's using that and the percentage down here is is not used and the one that that is actually used is based on 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 what I've entered up there. 
I can also enter pedestrian and bicycle flows up here, so they can be used to calculate the capacity of right turning, left turning vehicles, and so on. Um, some more parameters here on the second um, on the second uh, tab. Um, we have two different ways of 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 uh, of evaluating the level of service. One is the, um, or there are more, but the the most commonly used uh, for us is the German roadside manual, which is also the most uh, maybe maybe detailed in in estimating um, capacity for a signalized intersection. Detailed, uh, not meaning the most detailed in representation at Lisa also, but as in itself, it's also the most detailed, I think, um, in, in evaluating and taking the most parameters. Um, so we can give here information if there's a, for example, for the right turn, is there a traffic island or not? Um, how wide is it? What's the lane length? The lane length is is a factor in the in the capacity calculation um, for left turners. Very important. Um, how long is the pocket lane? Is it a pocket lane? And if yes, how long is it? Um, German roadside manual is very strict about that. Or can will will it will have effects on the through traffic if there is too much too if there are too many left turners waiting? Um, so. Yeah, without explaining all the uh, all the parameters, this is where you give flows and geometric parameters that go beyond what we have entered graphically, uh, but which all influence the level of service that we are reaching or the waiting times that we are reaching, uh, um, that we are calculating in the evaluation tools that, that are provided by the signal timing plan editor. That said, let's take this data and use it. I think I will jump to another, let's say, prefab that I have, a pre-made example where the evaluation data is uh, entered and it's a bit more detailed. Uh, I will show you what is included in here. Um, so this is the example number four in the demo version. When you have, want to have a look at it, it has a morning, uh, morning volumes, noon, uh, noon volumes, and afternoon uh, flows. Um, so three different matrices that differ a little bit in the way that the that the um, that the traffic is distributed among the flows, among the movements. And with this, we're going to go into the evaluation and the calculation of signal timing plans. So we're hopping again into signal timing plans. You remember we did a very, very brief calculation before we only had the um, the minimum green times and the um, and the intergreen times, but uh, that led to something that was very optimized in the by in the mean of by the means of of intergreen times, but not really taking into account what should be the split between the stages. So now, if we do the automatic signal timing plan calculation, we go here and choose the option flow morning seven to eight a.m. Um, we don't have to put a desired cycle time now because, um, you know, if we wouldn't have checked this box before with the minimum green times, it would have just made a very, very short, uh, short plan that wouldn't have made a lot of sense. And I just wanted to show you, yeah, we can get to a 75 second plan very easily. Um, right now, it would only make sense if we know we are within a coordinated corridor. We know that the intersection on the one hand is the, the neighboring intersections are all running in 90 seconds, but now we have an intersection somewhere isolated. We just want to know what is the minimum cycle time that we can work with here. We don't have any um, restrictions from, from neighboring uh, intersections, so just give me the optimum. So intergreen time matrix is the same that we chose before, and we're going to 
based this evaluation method, method as I said, on the German Roadside Manual version 2015. Um, what it will do now, it will go through all the cycle time starting at zero seconds and going to a maximum of 120. I could set it to 180 if I wanted to, but it won't be necessary. Go through all these cycle times, find the, uh, go through all possible stage, um, um, uh, stage or signal signal group uh, combinations that that it finds and assess them based on the um, average waiting time on the intersection and then it will present me the one timing plan signal timing plan that has the um, that has the best um, outcome there the perfect waiting time or the minimum waiting time better said so this will take some time so it has found 28 different uh, um, different stage sequences and it tells me the one that uh, had the shortest time is a stage sequence two three and four let's have a look at it we will before we save it and here is the graph of the waiting time um, independent depending on the on the cycle time so this specific uh, stage sequence two three and four um, has the minimum waiting time at a cycle time of 67 seconds as you can see here in the graph so it went through all the others but basically the waiting time is getting more and more because vehicles are waiting that it's it's not a capacity thing anymore it's just waiting for your turn so the minimum cycle time that we can choose is 67 done and that's how this plan looks like so as you can see this already makes much more sense um the uh, what doesn't make sense is the is here the yeah no it does make sense sorry i was in the wrong line um the main direction is now parallel they don't start exactly in the same second because still we have not defined any offsets i think we won't do that today because we don't want to um want to go into detail but this is stuff that we can still hone out you know we can we can tell lisa beforehand to say okay v1 v3 they should always start in the same second then it has not made a dedicated left turning stage and it has this uh, secondary direction station what we see here now is the level of service that is um that is um, the result for this particular uh, flow that we entered on the right side we have these properties the name of the signal timing plan cycle time and so on and down here the flow that you uh, that the um that the calculation is based on. So if we bring up our intersection diagram now, and we click somewhere in the plan, you will see that the level of service that we have calculated for the for the different lanes is also represented here by a color. Um, so the lowest level of service we're actually seeing for the pedestrians, P3, P4. So we're also calculating for pedestrians, and this is based on the cycle time so nothing not much we can do about it but for the vehicles we have a level of service of main mostly b let's see with one click how does this look for the other flows what with the uh, what about the flow for noon so we see also a b b it also gets a bit it even gets a bit better for v3 here i mean we could also make a new calculation and uh and and see what is the what is the minimum uh, cycle time for this flow? But um, yeah, sometimes maybe you have a given uh, signal time and plan. You want to see how does it work with different different flows. So here it's not it's not changing a lot. So the overall level of service is always B. So um, just the flow ratios that we're calculating are a bit different. So um i don't want to go into too much detail how the german roadside manual is calculating these level of services um the short version of it is um, um it's basically calculating um 
a flow ratio based on how much green there is, how much green there, there is needed. It has also some kind of normalized uh, vehicle that it's using. So um, the number of uh, heavy vehicles are also uh, used and then and then it does some calculations based on a, an average um, average probabilities of how many cars are actually at the stopping line in every in every cycle and and the the waiting time is somehow based on a uh, on an on this average tailback and on a tailback that will not be surpassed uh, with a 95% um with a 95% um probability so if you are a big fan of this stuff here is the you have all the values that are uh, that are used on the way or you can just go for every lane and say okay what's the level of service give me give me a number so the a is the best e is the worst i think and if even these details are details are not enough for you this is the log so these are of course it's in uh, these are all the steps that are being taken according to the roadside menu, which is, I think it's a six page document with a lot of values in between that you all have to uh, consider. Anyways, um, long story short, once you have a flow, Lisa can use it. It will present you with, a, um, with an optimized solution that um, is tailored to the flows that you have at the intersection. Um, you can compare them with one another. You can change the flow. It will directly update um, the outcome here. And uh, and that's it. And you can, yeah, you can put a little more, um, yeah, let's say, give it a bit more parameters to chew uh, on. For example, these offsets that I mentioned, where you make sure that, uh, yeah, maybe I should just show them. Um, so the offset matrix, something where you make the, the definition, for example, the beginning of green of uh, vehicle, vehicular group one should always be exactly the same moment, like three. So from the beginning of V1 to the beginning of green of V3 shall be exactly zero seconds. And as soon as I've made this definition and I go in here let's do the just we're doing the same calculations that we did before just let's let me get rid of this plan so uh, what have I done now okay same flow, morning, 7 to 8 a.m., no cycle time selected, no stages, HBS 2015. And now we have 69 seconds. You can see that there were much less uh, options now. And the plan looks like this. So, so you can see here, these two seconds here, now we have now we have the um, now we have the two vehicular groups starting in the exact same second as we wanted to. We have seen that it also is kind of limiting the 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 possibilities that Lisa can uh, can 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 use. I mean the the stage um, uh, the the stage the number of stages that it can calculate is is more limited. Um, the outcome is more or less the same. Um, and it's also working. Level of service is also the same with A and B and C for the pedestrians. I mean, once this is done, um, something I haven't showed you, of course, if you say, well, and now what can I do with this? Is this, this is just the outcome I have to accept it. Of course you can edit this. You can go on and I don't know, insert some green time here, for example, make it longer. You see the cycle time is going up. I want because I maybe I have to make it fit in the in the coordination. And I've just realized it now. Now it's 70 seconds. OK, fine. Mm, I want this left turning uh, stage a bit longer. Add a few seconds here, shorten it a bit here. Um, I can also just take green time, move it around. As you can see here, these are automatically detecting that this is violating the intergreen times that I have 
uh, defined. So that hence these red lines uh, coming up. Um, if I shorten the green time here, it will also automatically update the level of services that suddenly jumped to C. It was at B, I think. Now I go to the maximum again, it's at B. Also, if I shorten it, you see these little blue lines indicating that I have a reserve there and um, I could actually make it longer. If I shorten the if I shorten the green time here, you can see this this blue um, this blue part is is uh, representing the time that I am not using there. Um, I don't know. I can copy these plans. I can insert a new one. A lot of a lot of options here. Um, I will not go through with them through all of them with you. Um, maybe just so you've seen it, um, stages. I said at this point, Lisa is calculating the stages by itself. Why does it do that? Because we have not defined any stages. We can also do that if we wanted to. So maybe you already have a stage structure in mind or you're planning uh, a traffic actuated uh, control, then uh, you have to th go through this here in this example. They are already defined, but soon, but no, uh, these are the stages that Lisa has created in the uh, process of automatically um, of automatically uh, creating a signal timing plan and and they were saved here. Um, also, that is why the reason why it was did not go through all these uh, other stage uh, possibilities uh, earlier on. I was uh, actually confused there a little bit, so yeah. Once once they are created, Lisa will use them. So um, let's assume they're not here. We have not made any calculations beforehand, and we first started uh, creating them. Creating a stage as easy as this. Here's the stage. I want three stages because we already found out that seems to be the optimum for this intersection. One for the main direction. One for the uh, one for the left turn is one for the secondary direction. So three stages it is. I can uh, align them here automatically. Um, sorry, I did this off screen. So now they're, they should fit a bit better into this window. So um, how do I tell these are which signal groups are free? So those stage one, vehicular one, vehicular three, parallel pedestrians are P2, P4, and of course we have the acoustic signal and the flashing that we also want to be engaged in that moment. Stage two will be the left turners. And as you can see, as, as soon as I define that the left turners in stage two, Lisa is, um, is telling me or is, is blocking these other green these other uh, um, signal groups because they are conflicting with it so I, can, I have no chance to put it within this uh, um, in this stage except I make this click that I just made which I didn't want to so like that okay so you have v4 this is the um, the secondary direction. Now we have the stages. Then up here we have the stage transition matrix. I just define that here, which stage transitions are possible. This is uh, by defining those. I'm telling Lisa, hey, you maybe want to define stage transitions for it. That is the one, um, the one module here we haven't touched yet in the plans section. Uh, except for time switch, that's true. Uh, stage transitions, meaning nothing else that now that we have the stages. Uh, where do those come from? So I have some stage transition stuff in here because we did the automatic calculation, but if you start over, you should see a, an empty window. Um, we do the automatic generation of stage transitions here and um, Lisa tells us that it has found in the stage sequence plan stage transitions which are not defined. So um, to ask us, should we, should we do it? Yes, recreate stage transitions. And we have here the option to include minimum green time in the stage transition or not. And 
I will just do it. One, two, three. So it depends a bit. I don't know how familiar you are with this whole concept of stages and stage transitions. The idea is basically that um, in a traffic actuated control, um, this is their main function. I mean, we can use them uh, as a starting point for our, for our signal timing plan uh, um, calculation, but their main purpose basically is that uh, in a traffic actuated control, the the control itself is just changing between stages, between states that it can take. So this is one stage. This is one combination of traffic lights it can have, of, of signals it can have. This is one combination it can have. This is one combination it can have. And all the traffic actuated control does is in between use these kind of short plans with our stage transitions and uh, which tell them what it has to do in between uh, from the viewpoint of minimum green times and and inter green times. Um, so it's a very short version of how a stage based traffic activated control works. But basically all it does is when you're in a stage deciding, shall I stay in a stage? Shall I start a stage transition? And if we're in a stage transition, then these signal changes are are executed. That's what the stage transitions are for. Basically little snippets of signal timing plans that are used in the actuated control. So with that, we could go through the process and make another signal timing plan automated calculation based on the stages we just defined. So that is also some some of my colleagues do it that way. They always go first through stage, stage definition, stage transition definition, and then they start with the signal timing plans. Um, but the yeah, all the definitions for um, for a fixed timing plan uh, that we can use out in the streets and with, that we are certain that it has the capacity to cope with the traffic that we're expecting, all these steps we've already done. So safety and capacity, that part is covered. Um, now there are two things to make it more sophisticated. One is, are we in a coordinated corridor? And the other thing is, is this, um, um, is this a traffic actuated control? And um, we should, maybe we should start first with the coordination with the, or the green wave or whatever you want to call it. Um, how do you coordinate intersections that are in a corridor and you want to uh, make sure that the green times, that their signal timing plans are having their green times in a coordinated way. Well, Lisa has an answer for you. If we look at the coordinations here in the, in the project management, I'll click here on coordination and, um, what you what you might have noticed is the moment I clicked on the coordination, Lisa has not has loaded various uh, a number of variants that are here in my uh, in in my in my project folder, and it has selected them so I can work with them. It's double uh, it has, has activated them uh, at the same time. So um, that means they are all loaded into the uh, into the memory now, or into the into the working uh, um, in, into the working space of, of Lisa. And I have now here this button coordination. I can now edit one by one all the signal timing plans that are part of this coordination. But that's not the idea. The idea is that I can that I'm editing them in a coordinated way, and I've made some. I have made some uh, uh, some some definitions already here. I have defined the distances between the signal groups, and I have um, I have defined which signal group is in the main direction, and so far and so on. And I have also said what what signal timing plan do I want to see here? And based on this, Lisa is generating this signal timing um, time distance diagram. Um, and every one of those, um, let's say, vertical lines 
here is representing one intersection and you have the stopping line for the main direction. You have the stopping line for the opposite direction and you have um, this projection that tells you at a speed of 50 kilometers an hour, uh, this is the the path or this is this is the the time frame in which the platoon will arrive at the next intersection and what you can also do here in, is have lisa displaying the continuous um green meaning nothing else but if you move this intersection down, that's why where is the where is the problem here? Uh, we're not seeing it. Ah, okay, here. So this uh, this dark green color here now is representing that part of the of the green time where a car that would start at the first intersection and uh, travel at a continuous speed was actually be able to pass all intersection without stopping. So, um, and if I'm, what I can do now here is I can change the offset of the signal timing plans uh, that are loaded into this, uh, into this view um, and, uh, and, and improve my coordination accordingly. So if I would go to extremes and maybe move this intersection that's highlighted here, if I move it up by let's say 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I see that this margin where the where the cars can actually pass through without stopping, it gets smaller and smaller until it finally disappears. And uh, I've actually made life much more difficult for everyone traveling here and not even the other direction. So this will probably be the sweet spot where nobody is happy. Uh, while when I move this down, we can see that here now the green band for the one direction is getting better and maybe I can even manage to make life better for the opposing direction. Let's see where is the, here there's a bottleneck. So when we move this down a little bit, it should improve. And where else? Probably moving this up. Uh, it's hard to get because there's not so much space. Um, that is one way. Or I could um, tell Lisa to do an optimization by itself. Um, do analytical optimization. In that case, it's asking me to do uh, to to um, to take a flow and uh, some other parameters which we don't have the time to explain and then it will come up with an optimized version which is probably this one Wasn't this one? No. I think it was this one. Anyways, um, so the the no matter if you are an advanced user or um, or if you're just getting into coordinated corridors, uh, it's an absolutely um, absolute. Um, it's a great helpful tool to visualize what is happening in the coordination uh, to see where are the where's the potential where's put a potential mar margin for improvement where are the problems uh, we haven't even started about right turning uh, vehicles we could also add those in here um, and uh, yeah uh, i could talk just about this tool for maybe two hours but um, i think uh, it's also it would also be important to show you something of some of the the possibilities when it comes to traffic actuated control. Um, so um, yeah, let's move on. Also, I want to to leave some space for your questions and for discussions afterwards. So if we can wrap everything up until like, I don't know, 20 minutes to, to five or, or 15 minutes to five. Now. So uh, that would be great. So I will take another 10 to 15 minutes and explain some of the capabilities of 
some of the abilities of, of Lisa uh, regarding um, traffic actuated control, and then we will get into the con discussion. And um, yeah, so let's close this one. What I first will do is uncheck all these um, examples that we're not going to use. Um, if you want to check this later, you will find in your example, uh, in your demo as well, this version 2, it's called, uh, for some reason, not 0, 2, 2. This is the complete um, version of this intersection, um, which has all the all the data entered. Let me see if it's time switch here as well. Oh, yeah, I haven't even touched this. Um, you can also define for your intersection um, the weekly schedules that it should operate in when in uh, when in local mode and not getting the programs from a central uh, computer um, or you want to define them here because it's the easiest way to document them and give hand them over to whoever is programming the central. Um, but let's get to traffic actuated. I already told you stages, stage transitions. Those are the uh, main features to, um, or these are the elements that we usually work with in our traffic actuated controls. Um, traffic actuated control, um, the great feature that Lisa has is that it's supporting a variety of um manufacturers um where you can directly upload your um uh, the control that you've developed and tested within lisa and without um any fundamental alterations upload them to the to these controllers we have here um starting with Swaco, Actor, Swaco, ITC, Stuhlenberg, Dumba, Siemens, C900, and uh, some other uh, some other manufacturers, um, the possibility to just use codes that, um, that you develop here in this uh, development tool and, and then have the same functionality on the street. Um, also, we can uh, export to Visim and Aimson and uh, an open traffic uh, simulation tool called Zumo. We have a Utopia. Uh, um, um, we have Utopia support as well. So um, yeah, there's a there's a big variety of, of manufacturers that that are capable of of running our code. How do we do it? How do we um, how do we get things running? inside an actual controller. How do we test it here? The short version is, um, I said it already, actually Lisa, in this regard, when you have the professional version, it's a development environment. It This year may look like it's just uh, some graphical uh, diagram to show uh, a programmer how to actually implement the code that you're thinking about. But what it actually does in the background is that when you are adding here um, a symbol, an action symbol or a decision symbol and write code in it, that um, Lisa is internally at the, on the fly uh, translating this into source code. Um, Java or C++, depending on the manufacturer of the of the controller, and this um, and within Lisa, this source code is run in a virtual machine, uh, a Java environment, and um, and can be tested in our test site. So, oops, I closed it. So when you're hitting compile here, what happens is that the code that I showed you is internally compiled. If it compiles, if it's correct, if there are no errors in the syntax, then uh, you can go move over to the test side window. And 
as you can see here, here we have a representation of the intersection that we entered. Um, it um, this contains a simple simulation network. Um, it has um, all the detectors that you might have uh, defined. It has all the, the, the signal heads um, or the signal groups, and it has also this. Um, let's put it to the side. Use all the real estate on this screen. How did I do that? I have to open it again because my mouse did something funny. Here it is. Ah, okay, I have to grab it from here. So what we can do here, and that's really the very, very short version, is that we can run, a, we are running a simulation um, of the controller. We can simulate the fixed time mode, or we can simulate the traffic actuated mode. We can define test patterns for the detectors. Uh, we can also um, use the flows that we entered and um, have um, and have a simulation of the vehicles uh, going over the intersection. Uh, the intersect the vehicles will um, uh, yeah. Um, the vehicles are interacting with the detectors, and um, and we can test complex uh, complex controls here step by step. Um, those of you who are saying, okay, a real development, uh, a real development environment. Uh, I have a background in uh, in computer science, so that would actually mean that you can also debug your code, and that is actually the case. I am now right here inside the test mode the code is running in the background of this intersection and when i go back into the logic window then i am here now in a test mode in a debug mode and i can actually set a breakpoint within this control go back to the test window and go step by step and when when the control is coming back to that uh, to that step which right now it doesn't because I am in the wrong logic, probably. And it should stop there. Well, I'm not sure if I am actually in the right mode. Anyways. Weird. Yeah, here we go. It jumped to the. I think I I uh, used an older version of the of the of the logic. So this is the this is the um, debug mode where I go step by step through the execution of the logic, and I have full control of all the process variables that are uh, running right now. So um, short version is. You can simulate your control. You have full control over what it's doing. You can see the outcome either graphically here in the protocol on the right side, also on the street, uh, also even within the code, if I've demonstrated here. And um, yeah, I think it's the most comprehensive way of, of designing and testing a traffic actuated control because it's not only it's not something that you plan out in your head somebody else is implementing it a third person is testing it and then uh, when it comes on the actual controller it has gone through different phases stages of um, of, of uh, to different hands and 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 it has changed a uh, hundred times so um, you can exchange test cases if there's um, anything wrong uh, there are no discussions about whether or not something is going wrong so yeah um, that's the test side um, and we have 20 minutes left um, I know this last part was uh, was really just scratching the surface. Um, the compromise that I uh, or the problem that I face is I have to compromise between 
uh, going through all the features that Lisa is is uh, providing you versus um, versus um, yeah um, not being able to 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 go and to go too deep or 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 whatever. Yeah, you you get the point. So um, I can either explain it thoroughly and we would wouldn't be finished in two hours, or I can. Uh, go through all the features, but then I can just stretch the service. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if uh, one of the two things uh, it was either a bit shallow for you or it was a bit too fast. But uh, yeah, I wanted all of you to give you an idea what Lisa is capable of. For some of you, some features might be more interesting than others. Uh, we especially with international customers, we get very different feedback. Some are very interested in just the editor because they are using tools which are very cumbersome to even, I don't know, even edit a green time. So so stuff like this, just going into this data here. Uh, I have to close these modules, otherwise I cannot uh, edit something. Uh, for some, it's just already a big step forward to just do basic editing in here. For others, uh, they are more advanced uh, users. They they have never seen uh, a tool that can do traffic actuated control in such a comprehensive way. Other people are more interested in coordinations. Um, and and again, some are already thinking more ahead and thinking, how can I incorporate, uh, I don't know, my the roadside menu that that is that we're using in my home country. Would it be possible? How far are we away from that? Stuff like that. So I hope you all um, had uh, have yeah could have a good idea of but what is what Lisa is capable of. And if you have now ongoing or questions that go a bit deeper, if you want me to show a certain um, a certain element, maybe a bit bit more in detail than just um, write it in the chat um, and uh, we will do it. Uh, maybe first question to Julia, were there any questions during the uh, during the presentation? Is there something that I should answer right away? No, there is nothing. I think it was quite detailed and uh, we all have to digest your input at the moment. So <laughs> maybe if you have some questions now you can also raise use the raise your hand symbol on top of the window and yeah maybe one question from my side because uh, you you switched from the demo version to your own version do we have to compile another demo version for our participants or can they use the demo version that we have sent them um, they can use them. What won't work for them is going into detail with the with the green time into green time calculation. That is the the one the one feature that they will not be able to use. I guess we will compile a new version anyways because um, yeah we're using we're using the version also for for our software trainings. Uh, mentioning software trainings by the way, if you said that was very interesting, but I want to go deeper than yeah. Get in town contact with Julia. We are having uh, regular software trainings where we go through Lisa in um, in longer sessions over two days, um, going through all the features uh, in in detail. We have different levels of uh, of experience which are needed for those, and Julia can give you all the detail of, on how to attend those and where to register for them. Yeah, I will post and publish our uh, event calendar again here in the chat. But uh, meanwhile, there was a question and um, it is it regards the detectors. If the, the question was if it is possible to display some detectors before the stop line, like a distance of five meters or something. Maybe you could show this again. Yes. Um, so the detectors, uh, we yeah, we kind of uh, jump the detector part a bit. Um, sorry for that. So as you can see here, 
uh, in the in the graphical representation or in the in the um, basic data um, module. First of all, you can add detectors here the same way that you're adding uh, signal groups. You click on a lane and then you can either uh, choose an existing detector or create a new one by clicking the blue, the, the green plus. So um, you go ahead and say, OK, this detector is, I don't know, D99 is a new detector and its distance from the stop line shall be, let's say, 50 meters and I want this to be an inductive loop sensor and um, now it's created here I have one at 35 meters I have one at 15 meters um, I have to admit I'm not sure whether or not we have included the automatic um, automated update for this already that this is now carried over through the test side um, so in the test side the detectors are represented by these blue boxes here, as you can see. Uh, and I think I should have run an update of the network, which I haven't done. The new detector that I just defined is up here. Um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of handwork here to put them also in the in the uh, in the in this um, simulation network. So I will put it here on this link in the network and the distance shall be 15 meters to the stop line. And when I uh, update its position, then it's uh, put here in its uh, respective position. Uh, but this is only for its functionality within the within the simulation. So as soon as it's created, I can use it here in, in test patterns and uh, I can manually click it or I can include it in a test pattern and and have it have it activated there. Um, also, there is this um, in the configuration. Um, in the configuration uh, menu for detectors, you see now here it's um, it's new in the list. It's an inductive loop sensor. I can change the type if I go out of the simulation because now it's read only. Can I change it now? Yes. So here's the list: inductive loop sensor, sensor, or it could be an infrared or a video. Doesn't really change its function, but maybe you want to use this list also as a documentation. Um, for the manufacturer of the of the hardware outside. Um, the distance to the stop line shows up here. You should assign a signal group usually so that in the logic it's clear that the that the demand of this detector um, is designed is assigned to a signal group and then you can uh, use functions like um, how much time has passed since the demand and um, is the demand already served by the signal group or not? And if the signal group is, is uh, turning to green, then the demand will be deleted. Yeah, that is that. I hope that was helpful. Yes, then there was another question and it is, um, how can I change the duration of only the yellow blinker? in the STR without affecting the other signal group? Mm, the yellow blinker, let me check. There is a blinker in here, yes. Yeah, as I showed you, wait one more second, I have to close again. Okay. Um, if we want to change only the, I, maybe it's uh, it, this is referring to I have before that I have shortened and lengthened the whole plan all the time. If we want to change only the blinker here, then we can just shorten or move it around. As the as you can see, the blinker has no conflicts whatsoever because it's not uh, relevant, uh, safety re relevant in that regard. So uh, if I want to move it around and lengthen, I can just uh, click and drag its endpoint, or just move the whole uh, the whole whole blinker around um, from right and left. I hope that answered the question. Or, or are we talking about the the yellow time here? Because that is a signal timing, a signal signal type definition. Okay, good.
OK, they pop in some more questions. Um, um, so yeah. set up the vehicle flow in the test site. Um, the vehicle flow in the test site is the same vehicle flow that we entered uh, when we entered our evaluation parameters. You might uh, remember that I jumped here to this version where they already entered. So these were created manually. I could put in here a new one, like I don't know, test flow. Um, and I will base it on the morning flow and just say, OK, this is the morning flow by factor 1.5. I don't know. You can see it's a, it's a bit higher than the other one. And as soon as I've done that, once I jump over to the test site, um, it will show up here uh, when I right click into the into the um, uh, into the simulation um, as one of the flows that I can choose here. So as soon as I choose none, you will notice that um, we don't see any vehicles here in the simulation. And um, and if I reset it and I set the flow, let's say to this test flow, then I have the vehicles coming in. So um, the simulation is sharing the same data like uh, like like all the other um, like all the other elements. Um, that is maybe also a detail that needs to be set for the for the um, creation of um, traffic actuated controls. When you start uh, programming your traffic actuated controls, all the objects that are needed for that, all the definitions like what is a signal group, what is a stage, how what signal timing plans are there, everything you need to program, all these definitions are already made. All the objects we have um, created in the other modules, signal timing plan editor, in the stage editor, in the signal group editor or the basic data, all these relevant objects are at the same time automatically created for a traffic actuated uh, um, for a traffic actuated uh, control editor. So yeah, I answered already the the question to the um, recording, we it will need us a few. We will need a few days to to handle it, to review it, and make it a bit more comfortable comfortable to rewatch. And then we will publish the video on our YouTube channel. We will mention okay. this in the next invitation for our next webcast. So at the latest. Okay, what else was here? Oh, I think there's a follow up question to the detector question. Yeah. It's about a negative um, negative distance to the stopping line. Uh, in that case, um, the only chance that you're having, um, let's say you're using the detector for, um, I can only, the only use for that that I can imagine is maybe, um, maybe a DG registration for a bus. The chance that you would have here, let's say this detector D99 would have a negative distance from the stop line then you would have to choose the line that comes after the stop line as the element where the where the detector should be positions, positioned and then there um, you have a length of this path segment of four meters. Let's say it's a negative of three meters, then I would say 2.40 to the end and then it should be positions here at three meters. So then you have to now you have to choose where, where to put it um, afterwards. So it's not automatic. You cannot enter it here negatively. You have to go further in the in the simulation network and put it there. OK, and then there was a question from Denise. How uh, to configure different signal types, for instance, pedestrian, green, flash red and green? And the question if this does affect the exportation to VISIM or uh, different types of controllers. Yeah, um, the answer is yes. And the second question is yes and no. <laughs> so um, how do we do it? Signal groups um, in the signal group um, in the signal group uh, a module there is this um, option signal type table. I think this is not accessible in the demo. I'm not sure why that is, 
but I I missed it before, I think. So how does it work? Here we have our standard uh, signal types, vehicles, vehicle green and yellow. And um, when we go into the um, into this dialog, edit color indications, um, you have to define for all the for every for every color indication what does it actually mean so um yeah maybe here first of all the basic definition is okay we have um we have three we have a number of of three uh phases three lamps basically what is the diameter what is the minimum green time and so on what kind of class is it and when you go into the detailed definition, then you have to define all the color indication. What means unlit? What is the status of all these faces that I said that the signal head has? What is red? How is it defined? Is it state red? What's the OCIT code for it? Um, does it have to be monitored with minimum and maximum times? Uh, and then red means, OK, phase one is on, the other ones are unlit, and so on and so on. Then you have different signalization states for it green, red, yellow flashing, then you have different switch commands. Uh, the most important being the initiation and the and the termination. Um, yeah, and in these here, you can make these definitions. Um, the second part of the question, what consequences does it have for the export for VISIM? Um, if I remember correct for VISIM, it doesn't really, it does actually not affect uh, the export to VISM at all, because um, in VISM, this control is also running in a dedicated uh, LISA, um, uh, in a LISA um, uh, simulated uh, traffic controller. And this traffic controller is only giving information to VISM like, uh, okay, um, it is it is off, it is yellow, it is green, it is blue, it is it is red, stuff like that. So this is not based on on signal times, but just on uh, on color indications. And uh, as long as you have your control up and running in Lisa, it would also run in VISM. With controllers, it's a different and much more complex topic. So you cannot just go on uh, and and define some color indications here and 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 hope that the controller will do it. You have to ask with first have to talk with the technical guys of the manufacturer. Some uh, some controllers are easier uh, on new signal types and can digest them pretty easily. Others uh, only have a certain set of signal types um, that you will have to live with. But that is something you have to ask them, and it's really dependent on the manufacturer and on the on the on the version of the firmware running on it. Okay, thank you for the detailed answer. And uh, as we are now one minute from five, I think we could close this um, chat or um, I, I just posted um, some two files. One is our event calendar again, as a reminder, and uh, the other one is the general overview of the contents of our English LISA trainings. And also I um, published the email address service at schlotauer.de if ever you have um, further questions regarding Lisa features and modules, they can be addressed to service at schlotauer.de. Yeah, um, then I hope every one of you could take something uh, out of this webcast. Please do not hesitate to give us feedback. Uh, maybe it was too detailed, maybe you had other requirements when you read the invitation for this webcast, please let's know, let us know if, uh, yeah, if this was what you, um, what you wanted or what you imagined. And uh, if you have suggestions to, um, to make it better, then let's know of those. Um, yeah, that's it um, from my side. Thank you all. Have a nice rest of the day and uh, now I pass the ball back to Torben for the last words today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Julia. Um, thank you for your support and for organizing this uh, this meeting and or this uh, click along. And um, yeah, I uh, only can thank you all for your um, for your attention. Um, 
thank you for the for the questions and um, I hope to see you again someday, maybe in a click along or in a what's new or in one of our trainings. So um, yeah, have a great day and um, see you soon somewhere in the online work or let's hope offline someday. <laughs>